Our scripture lesson today is from the gospel, the gospel of Mark, the 10th chapter. As I continue in this sermon series entitled, I See You, we are looking at biblical characters that help us understand the ways in which we need to be more sensitive and intentional about noticing the people around us. So hear now these words from the Gospel of Mark, and I invite you to stand out of reverence for this reading. Jesus and his followers came into Jericho as Jesus was leaving Jericho, together with his disciples and a sizable crowd, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus. Timaeus' son was seated beside the road. When he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was there, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, show me mercy. And many scolded him, telling him to be quiet. But he shouted even louder, Son of David, show me mercy. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him forward. They called the blind man, be encouraged, get up, he's calling you. Throwing his coat to the side, he jumped up and he came to Jesus, and Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said, teacher, I want to see. And Jesus said, go. Your faith has healed you. And at once he was able to see and he began to follow Jesus on the way. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Three retirees were experiencing some hearing loss as they were walking down the street one windy March day. One of them said, windy ain't it? And the other one said, no it's not, it's thirsty. And the third one said, I am too, how about we stop and get a Coke? Hearing loss. It's not really a laughing matter, but it happens as we get older. And yet, many of us have ears that work just fine, but we don't really listen to other people, do we? Years ago, I saw a sitcom television show, and on that sitcom, for whatever reason, this scene stuck in my mind. A man is coming home from work one day, and it's obvious from the expression on his face that he's tired. He walks into the house, he throws his keys in a bowl beside the door, he puts his briefcase down and he starts to loosen up his necktie as he walks towards the refrigerator and opens the door. He's not paying any attention to who else is in the house that point, he's just trying to unwind. His wife, however, needs to tell him something very important that has happened that day, and she immediately starts talking the minute he walked in the door. He's not really listening to her, so instead he does this. As she's talking, he decides to just go, uh-huh, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The problem is his mm-hmmms and his ahas were in the wrong place. And she caught on when she asked him a question, and he responded by saying, mm-hmm. So she decided she would get back at him, and she said, well, just then, I decided to take the dental floss and chop my head off, and my head rolled under the couch in the living room. She paused. He shook his head and went, wait a minute, what did I just hear? 
I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Yeah, right. Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> Be honest. Has it ever happened to you? You're engaged in a conversation with someone, and all of a sudden you remember that you forgot to turn the eyes off on the stove, and you start worrying about that. Did I turn them off or not? And you get totally disengaged. Or you're greeting somebody here at church on Sunday morning, and out of the corner of your eye, you see someone else come in that you haven't seen in months, and you think, oh, I need to go say hey to that person. And you just disengage from the person who's right in front of you, and you miss everything else that they have to say in that conversation. Sometimes we get so focused on other things that we don't pay attention to the people right in front of us who are talking to us. Hearing loss is a bad thing, a devastating thing when it happens to us. Thankfully, there are hearing aids around to help us with our physical ears. But many more people suffer from a lack of ability to listen than there are people who suffer from physical hearing loss. And it's affecting our relationships with one another in this world. It happens to all of us. Every one of us. So I make a true confession. There are times in my household that my husband Richard is talking but I am busy with something like writing a sermon. Or maybe I'm looking for a different color of fingernail polish that I really need. But he keeps talking. And so I don't really listen to him. And it really bothers him when I do that, right? It bothers all of us when someone does not listen to what we have to say. We miss out on a lot that goes on in those conversations when we don't listen to others. In the story that I just read for us in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is on to Jerusalem. It's going to be the last week of his life. He is headed towards his crucifixion, and he knows this. There's a lot on his mind that he's focused on, and there's a crowd of people who are following him. Did you notice in that very first verse it says they came into Jericho, and then they went out of Jericho? I mean, he's just blowing through Jericho. Jericho, known as one of the oldest cities on the face of the earth. A beautiful little city. If you haven't seen Jericho, I invite you to join along with me and Mike and Betsy Alexander in February of this coming year. We're going to be taking a trip to the Holy Land, and we'll go to the city of Jericho. We'll point out to you that, that sycamore tree that Zacchaeus climbed up in that beautiful little town. And we can look for the spot of road that Jesus walked by on this particular day. On this particular day, as Jesus is walking through Jericho to get towards Jerusalem, the text tells us that there is this blind beggar who's sitting on the side of the road. This blind beggar realizes that Jesus is about to pass by in front of him, and so he shouts out, Son of David, have mercy on me. This is the first time someone has recognized Jesus as the son of David. Somehow this blind beggar who didn't have eyesight had insight to know who Jesus was, that Jesus could do something for him that he needed. And the other people who are around have probably seen this blind beggar on the side of the road very often and ignored him. To them, he was a nobody. He had no job, he had no prestige, he had no status, he had no money. Just another beggar on the side of the road. 
My friends, we all pass people like Bartimaeus every day that we don't even notice. We walk by them and we don't even see them. They're like fixtures as we talked about last week, being treed. We see them as an object like a tree. We don't see the people. This crowd following Jesus didn't want to notice Bartimaeus on the side of the road. Bartimaeus had to shout out, Jesus, notice me, have mercy on me. And the crowd tried to silence him. They told him to be quiet, don't bother Jesus. Why did they do that? Why were they stopping someone from getting close to Jesus? It makes me wonder, do we stop people from coming to Jesus because we're so focused on what we need from Jesus that we stop others from being able to come close to Jesus? In thinking about this new form of worship, a different style of worship, I was struck by the fact that B.B. King, known as the King of Blues, said he grew up in a Baptist church, but the Baptist didn't allow guitar music in the sanctuary at that time. And he said, I just couldn't get in to the church. I just didn't dig it, as he said. But then he found a church of God where the music spoke to him, where he could move his body to the rhythm. And he got involved in the church so much so that he began teaching Sunday school classes and he developed the nickname Church Boy. My friends, are there ways that we stop people from drawing close to Jesus? That crowd that day wanted to stop Bartimaeus from coming close to Jesus. It's almost like they wanted Jesus to themselves. Be quiet, Bartimaeus, be quiet. But Jesus heard his voice, not just with his ears, but with his heart. And Jesus heard the pain in Bartimaeus' voice. And he did something very, very important I don't want us to miss. Jesus asked Bartimaeus a question. He said, what do you want me to do for you? Now, most of us would think it's obvious. He's blind, right? He wants Jesus to heal him so he can see. Why is Jesus asking him, what do you want me to do for you? But Jesus did something very important by asking that question. Jesus gave to Bartimaeus what we call agency. He allowed Bartimaeus to take ownership for what he needed and to give voice to that. Because maybe what Bartimaeus really needed from Jesus right then was recognition. Someone to see him and acknowledge him as a person. Maybe what Bartimaeus needed in that moment was affirmation that he was valued, that he was seen. Maybe what Bartimaeus needed was companionship, a friend. Jesus allowed him to give voice to what he really... We assume based on our own perspective from our cultural background, that we know what other people need, and we don't ask them what they need. We just presume they need whatever we think we would need in that situation. Now, I'm preaching to the choir congregation. I know because in our soup cellar ministry, we understand that a lot of our siblings who come and receive physical food in the soup cellar are seeking different things. They aren't all seeking the same thing because they're different people. 
And so we need to take the time to listen to their stories and to ask them, what do you need? What would you like for us to do for you? You know, way back, really not that long ago, but it feels like it was, when George Floyd was murdered, do you remember how there were protests, marches, yelling, and people misunderstood what the anger was about. People misunderstood what the marching was about. There were people who misunderstood the cry, Black Lives Matter, and they tried to silence those voices. You remember that? And the silencing of the voices was just another way of saying, we're not really going to listen to you. We're not going to give you agency. We, we know what you need, and okay, quiet down, just like this crowd. But Jesus shows us another way. Jesus says, open your heart. Listen not just with your ears, but listen with your heart to where other people are coming from and what's going on in their lives and respond without judgment, with compassion to hear what is happening and to know what it is that they really need. Really see people and hear people so that you can know people and help them to know my love for them. It's really easy for us to tell other people to listen to us, but it's difficult to listen to other people, particularly people who look differently and think differently and act differently. You know, it is difficult for people of my generation at times to understand what millennials and Gen Xers are dealing with and going through. We look in the church and we say we want more young people here, but young people don't necessarily want out of the church the same thing that older people want out of the church, the same Sunday school formats and the same everything else doesn't necessarily speak to their lives. And millennials don't necessarily understand older folks who don't know how to just text and use a smartphone. What, you want me to call you? I'll just text you. I don't need to call you. Democrats don't understand Republicans. Republicans don't understand Democrats. People of different races don't understand one another. People with different sexual identities don't understand one another unless these groups take time to really listen to one another and hear each other's stories. People with different theological perspectives and from different denominations speak past each other too often without listening to hear where people are coming from. This story us that Jesus shows us a way to make space in our hearts and space in our lives to really listen to the cries of other people all around us, to notice them, to see them, and to stop what we are doing, to stop being so focused on, on what meets our needs that we don't ask that simple question, what do you need from me? Stephen Covey, who wrote that famous book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective Persons, tells a story in that book about being in the New York subway one day. He said it was a quiet Sunday morning, and they were all seated, the people in that little subway car, minding their own business. Some were reading their newspaper, some were doing the crosswords, some were just sitting there enjoying the peace and the quiet. But then at one of the stops, a man and three children entered that subway car. The man came and he sat down right by Stephen Covey. And he just closed his eyes and collapsed. 
His three children, however, were running up and down that subway car, just making noise. They were picking up things, taking up people's newspapers, and then they started throwing things at one another, making all sorts of racket, disturbing the peace. And Stephen says, I could tell I was getting very irritated and frustrated with the man and his children and the whole situation. And so I looked at the man and I said, hey, don't you think you ought to do something to control your children? And he said when he asked the man that, the man came into a state of consciousness. And he said, oh, Oh, yeah, I, I guess I should. I'm sorry, I, I just can't think straight right now. We just got on this subway car from the hospital where their mother just died an hour ago. And I just don't know what to do. I guess they don't know what to do either. Stephen Covey said when he heard those words, his feelings changed, his thoughts changed, and his behavior changed. He saw this man as someone who was in pain instead of someone to be irritated against. All of his preconceived notions about this man dissolved. And he saw the real person, someone that he started to have empathy and compassion for. My friends, when we stop long enough from whatever we're focused on to listen to the people around us, beautiful things and ministry can take place. And when we ask people that question that Jesus asked, what can I do for you? I believe it'll make a world of difference to make this world more like God's kingdom on earth. So I challenge you this week, to notice the people around you, especially the people who are different from you, and to listen to those different voices. May it be so for you and for me, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.